Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Thank you so much for joining me today. We got a ton of stuff to cover today. Obviously, that's what we opened up to this morning. That's how the market closed yesterday. Uh, we are going to do a deep dive into game planning today. Obviously, on a day like today, picking stocks, you really need to be on top of your game. Picking stocks, you really need to have the top, the top of the list, really. In this kind of environment, especially right now where we have our, our Discord channel and we're actively trading, both day trading and swing trading. This is really where you need to be on top of your game. So I actually want to walk you through uh, something that I emailed out this morning, but I also posted into the community today. And I think you can see it. All right. Dead cat bounce. We'll talk about what that means in a second. Let's not forget we hit new all time highs uh, just two days ago. So a lot of people are panicking right now with the size of the move that we had yesterday. Which it was a pretty big move. Let's just be let's just be real with that. The, the spy we'll take a look at in a second. Kind of dancing around pretty much until two o'clock. There was a couple of pockets of opportunity, but let's not forget. Two days ago, we hit new all time highs. This is where we got to make sure we keep perspective. Okay. All right. The Fed minutes destroyed the bullish fever. In case you didn't know what happened yesterday, today sets up a game plan of cat and mouse. So tape reading takes center stage. So before we even move on, what does that actually mean? What does it mean that where it's tape reading takes center stage? We're going to do a deep dive. I'm actually going to pull up my personal trading screens, and we're going to walk through the trading screens to take a look and see how we're reading the tape from hour to hour, day to day, and week to week to determine which stocks are in play right now. So the reason I'm going to show you that right now, and when I say that you're going to earn your stripes today, Dead cat bounce essentially means you have a really hard move to the downside and it hits and bounces. Now, after that bounce is where you're going to end up earning uh, your stripes as a trader because you need to determine whether or not this is the start of a new move or an overreaction to the existing price action, which is that longer term bullish move that just hit um, fresh all time highs. So we have a lot to cover today. I got all my screens set up today. I'm going to pull them in and show you the whole thing. So uh, stick around. I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me here, everybody. Obviously, everything we're about to discuss is for educational purposes. It's up to you to make that final decision. I've made it my mission to help you make better decisions. So we're going to finish up that little snippet that I just showed you, and then we're going to actually get into the charts. I'm going to do some scanning. That's really what we're going to walk through today is because today you need to be nimble. It's it's building a list of the highest likelihood stocks that are going to find a bid. And if you're advanced, if there's any short sale candidates out there, and I'm going to show you how to run through the scans in different parameters to really hit them from different angles to come up with the top stocks that you might want to be buying. I'm going to use a free software, finviz.com. And then I'm going to also go into my trading, uh, excuse me, my trade station setup and give you some ideas for what you could possibly do in your own personal software. And what we're going to talk about right now, it doesn't matter if it's day trading or swing trading, all of the same principles apply, which takes us back into the letter I just wanted to show you. All right. Today, you learn your stripes as a trader. Getting long on the dip seems to be like the right play, which it is. Now, that is such a huge package in that little short statement because seems to be and likely is, implies that we need to be on our toes to take action. And that's where a lot of traders get in trouble, where you turn a short-term trade idea where you're looking for cash flow in a less than perfect market, and you blow your stop, and you turn that short-term trade into a swing trade or an investment because you're like, I got stuck in the trade and I couldn't get out. First of all, bull, <laughs> bull S. You never get stuck in a trade. You're just choosing not to get out of that trade. So what I'm trying to tell you right now, before the market opens, we have roughly two hours before the market opens. We have Thursday and Friday and the rest of what's going on. The rest of this week, which is Thursday and Friday, it's going to require you making decisions. It's going to require you knowing what you plan to do before you need to do it. Because we're kind of right on the precipice right now where if that news that the Fed minutes came out and they talked about tapering, they talked about interest rates. If that news now has a little bit more legs, meaning a little bit more impact on the market, there's going to be more selling. Now, does that mean that opportunity is over? No, that doesn't mean opportunity is over. It just means that we're going to adjust how we plan to trade. Probably a little bit more hedging, 
probably a little bit more cash flow, probably a little bit more building into positions with a little bit more intentionality, definitely going in a little bit more sector specific, which is actually what we're going to do right now. We're going to break that down a little bit more. If you have in your mind right now the fact that the market's rolling over and all the opportunities gone, the easy money is out of the way, nothing could be further from the truth. The first two and a half years that I traded was a bear market. I started in April, April 17th of 2000. So if you go to a chart, you'll see it was down April of 2000, right down to March of 2003. So it was actually a little bit more than that. That was when they pulled down the, the statue of Saddam Hussein and the market just started to rally from there. There will be opportunity, even if we kind of go sideways or even down a little bit, if you are prepared. The biggest thing I want to get across, and we had a big year end um, uh, coaching call this year. It's act, as of right now, it's five hours worth of coach uh, video. I'm still going over it. The biggest thing that we got across on those coaching calls is if you're prepared, there's a good chance you're going to see your account go like this. If you're lazy, if you're blowing your stops, if you're not doing the game planning, in other words, if you're not prepared, you're not going to have conviction. If you're not prepared, you're not going to have decisions you need to make. What I'm going to show you right now is part of the process of being prepared. All right. So this is going to be a good one. Probably one you're going to watch more than once. So I just want to finish up on this letter. You need to be ready with your stops, right? Seems like the right play, which it is, but you need to be ready with your stops. So immediately before the market opens, we're talking about the possibility of buying strong stocks, but be ready if the bid doesn't hold. So we're already scripting out what we plan to do before the market opens. Okay. So let's finish it up. The dead cat bounce is on the table, but be ready to read the tape if it's short-lived. We'll have plenty of opportunity, need to be nimble in the next few days. So that's the mindset before we even start to look at ideas. Now, we already know that this is what we're looking at coming into the day. We also have some other news that is less than perfect. So let's just get right over into that right now. And first, the first one I want to point out is this. Uh, Bitcoin and other currencies slide as global stocks fall on hawkish Fed minutes, right? That's great. That's the after that's the after headline, right? But if you remember yesterday, we did a really big deep dive into Bitcoin and the Bitcoin mining stocks we were watching. And we were super clear that Bitcoin traded into a box. Bitcoin was in that box and only one of two things could possibly happen as it pushed down and went sideways. We had that 5,000 point window and we said only one of two things is going to happen. It's going to break the box to the downside, validating the bearish order flow and not look to buy the mining stocks that we were talking about before. If it went sideways and broke to the upside, then we can start to look to build a position both in Bitcoin as well as in the Bitcoin mining stocks. If then, if then, I'm telling you, if then, if this happens, then I'm doing this. If this happens, then I'm doing this. You need to get into that mindset every single day, whether you're day trading or swing trading. But here's the thing. You need to wear yourself out if you're day trading. If you're day trading, every single thing you're looking at, if, this, if the VIX rallies or the TIX pushes lower and the S&P 500 goes below the open, then I'm going to be shorting XYZ stock. That you need to be doing all day, every day. And I'm going to show you what that means again. So you could watch this video again, start to get a little bit of a framework for yourself and your conviction level starts to go like this. That's what you want to have. So I'm going to show you the chart of Bitcoin that we talked about yesterday. Uh, first, we're taking a look at the um, S&P futures. We're kind of right at zero right now which is not horrible, quite honestly. Uh, but I want to point out Bitcoin. The one thing I want to point out as well, in case you don't know, Bitcoin trades futures contracts and they expire. So you need to be on top of, right now we're looking at the January contract, which has the most volume. Eventually we're going to move over to February where the volume starts to shift over into February. But this is the box that we drew. If you remember yesterday, and you can see the volume here, that's what we're talking about. Pushed down, bearish order flow after it pushed up to new highs, pulled back, pushed up. Sellers came in, pushed down and paused, pushed down and paused. And now we're pushing down again through the box. So what does that mean? Well, if you remember yesterday, we talked about Mara and Riot. And we said these were big support levels where they were not longs and not shorts at the same time unless the support broke. So now we're looking at breaking of the support. So now does the bid continue to melt. That's what we're looking at right now. So as we break the support level and Bitcoin goes down, we have to be planning. Again, this is a little advanced, but we have to be planning a short sale. Here's the thing, though. It's not a short sale, set it and forget it and, and you know, go golfing. We broke big support. Everybody and their grandmother is looking at the support level right now. The next level below this in Bitcoin is around 42,000. 
uh, let me actually just pull that back up. Let me get that in the chart, which is here. So we're looking all the way down here, right around 41, 42,000. We could probably see that a little bit better on the continuous contract month. So if we go here, you'll see it a little bit better right there. That's the next level down there. So what does that mean? That means that because we've just broke that to the downside, now we're starting to work a position on the short side. If it's borrowable, if, if Mara and uh, Riot and the other ones happen to be borrowed, sometimes you, they're hard to borrow and you can't get it. But here's the thing. When you get really obvious levels like this, everybody's looking at the same level. So you get a lot of people jumping on the same side of the trade. So now we're mapping it out. If this happens, which support broke in both Bitcoin, Mara and <coughs> Riot, now what that means is we put the first piece of the trade on and we step back and we say, if we get follow through, the next push down and pause, we'll look to add to the short sale, assuming there's room to go, right? Which there is in this case. If we push down, put the first piece on and it rallies back up and we start to get a short covering rally, we just bail on the trade because it's not doing what we wanted it to see. The reason I'm showing you this first in Bitcoin today and walking our, ourselves through it is because we're going to see that in a lot of the ideas and stocks that we're looking at right now because it's tempting to be buying this dip. So now you have to have in your mind, if it pushes down, buyers step in and they buy the gap. Or if we test yesterday's low and they buy the gap. Or if we break through yesterday's low and come back up, then we buy that short-term rally. If that happens and we hold the bid and we stay above the opening price, and from one hour to the next, and Thursday to Friday, we start to follow through, we could start to build a position back in the direction of those all-time highs. If we push down, rally the first couple of hours of today, maybe even rally today, and then tomorrow we open higher, but we start to roll over, you need to know what you plan to do in that situation. I am telling you right now as your friend, the market conditions have changed. The bottom from the pandemic low to even, let's say, the second week of November had that government bid underneath it, quantitative easing, no fear of interest rates. That story has changed, which means you need to be on top of your game right now. And, and the reason I'm telling you this, I'm going to pull up a, a, a couple of stocks, but I'm going to go to one specific right now, which is this one. All right. This stock was one of the uh, what's what's the, the phraseology I want to use? One of the easiest stocks for us to read the tape and read the order flow in this year. Really nice moves, weeks on end, the kind of stuff that you really want to see inside of um, anything that you're looking at. Best case scenario, you're finding it in a individual sector. But the tape changed. The tape changed. The stock started to pull back. And I know some traders, not in my community, but I know some traders that are stuck in this stock. It went up to 220. It's got a 50% haircut. 50%, okay? This is what you need to be aware of right now. 220 down to 105 and change. That is a 50% haircut. Why am I telling you this? I'm not telling you to scare you. I'm telling you to wake you up. The bigger picture, the easy money, the Fed-induced push to the upside is wake, making its way out of the market. There's no other way to put it right now. Sure, you might get a stimulus check. We're getting back to a normal market where we're actually going to be looking at earnings and valuations and, and did they report good last quarter and how does that play into the next quarter and, and the next 12 months, which is kind of exciting because now we're actually going to get back into reading earnings reports and they're actually going to mean something in the context of up and down and sideways and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm trying to get across to you now before it happens if you're a trader, I'm not talking I'm not talking to you if you're looking to buy a stock in January 2022 and sell it when your grandkids go to college. That's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about you want to be in charge of how much extra cash flow you bring into your house every month. That means you need to make decisions, which means you need to throw out the window your ego and say, if you put on a trade, all the greatest reasons in the world, and that trade does not follow through, scale out or get out and go look for the next opportunity. I'm telling you right now, the tape has changed, which is going to open up all different opportunities on the long side, the short side, stocks and options and crypto and a whole bunch of other ideas. It's just that straight big blue line that was blue skies and nothing in the way. It's working its way out of the market. So I'm telling you right now, you need to dust off that stop loss key dust off that trailing stop loss key and learn the other side of the market, which is making decisions. Now, 
Now we're going to get into how to make those decisions. So one of the first things we're going to talk about is doing a little bit of a deep dive into sectors and breaking down sectors. So what I'm what I'm showing you right now, this is my this is my trade station setup. So I'm going to I'm going to I don't know if you can see it perfectly, but I'm going to start to pull them up on an individual basis. What I essentially have here is what we talk about pretty much every day, which is sector rotation breakdown. So if you watch what we do every day, and hopefully you do, we start at the bottom. We have what we call the stock market power pyramid, where we read the market, the big picture of the market, which is the Dow, the S&P, and the 500. Last week, we actually noticed a divergence in the market where the S&P was making new highs, the Dow was making new highs, and the NASDAQ wasn't. And we actually called it. We said that if all three of them are not doing the same thing, that means all of the money on the table is not on the same page. And what's interesting is the fact that tech stocks were the ones that were pushing us for a while, but now the specter of higher interest rates is coming in. That's going to be the weight on tech stocks. And now we shift over and now we've been paying attention to industrial stocks, basic material stocks, energy stocks, and financial stocks. So we shifted away by tape reading, by reading the order flow, by having this stuff on our screen every single day. And I think I could make it a little bit bigger for you. Uh, let me just let me just try. I don't know if you'd be able to read it. Uh, pull that up. All right. So you can read that a little bit better. So these are all the stocks in the technology sector that I'm watching. But then you need to work them down into different time frames. So what we need to basically do is start working out to say where over a certain period of time were they strong. So basically, we're now working our way into which stocks are worth looking at and which stocks don't even go on your watch list. That's the first part of it. Sector rotation on a bigger picture is the next step. So now we look at working our way into short-term charts, which is, I'm going to try and pull it up into the screen, which is this one, okay? This is the one that I'm watching on a daily basis on active trading. So I want to just make it clear. What we're talking about right now is we're looking at big picture stuff over the quarter, the month, the week, and quite honestly, from one day to the next. And we're putting those pieces together and we're looking to see which ones are performing well now. So if we go into what we just looked at, and this is the three to five day window of those same sectors. You can't see it here in the top left hand corner is, uh, let me actually get that off the screen so you can see it, is right there. You can see that's energy and you can see energy had a three day run. You can see that financials had a multi-day run. Let me see if I could zoom that out a little bit so you could see it. The financials had a little bit of a run. Basic materials had a couple of day run. But in that same period of time, technology, the Qs, and the XLK were weak. XLV was strong for a few days. Let me zoom that out a little bit. Actually, you can't see it on this one. But XLV, healthcare was strong. But healthcare started to work its way out. Now, I want to make this clear. What I'm showing you is not hard, but you need to take time on a Saturday or a Sunday to set it up for yourself that when you're looking for swing trades, when you're looking for day trades, all of this information is at your feet, uh, right in front of you at your hands, so that if we happen to notice financials are ripping to the upside, you need a list of financials to go to look at. doesn't matter if it's a day trade or a swing trade. If we notice that healthcare stocks are getting hit, even if they're setting up, you might want to stay away from them because you have a bigger list of stocks in that group. I'm going to say this. I'm very compliant. I don't say anything I don't mean, especially because it's on, on video. Trading is easier when you're prepared. If you don't have conviction, if you lack that confidence every time you place a trade, it simply means that you're not doing what we're showing you right now in your spare time so that when you're ready to place a trade, Everything unfolds in a simpler way. We're like, okay, financials are strong. Basic materials are strong. Uh, healthcare stocks are down. Energy stocks are super strong. Which energy stocks? And you go right into those lists. What we do to keep things as simple as possible, and when I say simple, I don't mean that, um, what, when I say simple, I mean repeatable because you're prepared. That's what I mean. I, I, I don't mean simple in that you'll, you know, it, it, it just falls off of the, your monitor and money like kind of pops out of the keyboard. What I mean is, Money is a lot easier to expect and opportunity is easier to expect when you're prepared. So if you write anything down, we try and give you post-it notes every day, something to write down. It's easier to make money when you're prepared, which means that first you need a process for understanding which ideas are valid at that moment. So again, like I was saying, we were beating the heck out of technology stocks. They were strong. 
Technology stocks, as interest rate conversations started to go up, technology stocks started to get a little bit less volatile to the upside, less easy to trade. Then we started to work our way over into healthcare stocks. Healthcare stocks started to become really obvious, so we just started to trade healthcare stocks. Healthcare stocks, which is crazy, as the the variant started to get a little bit more out of control and worse, healthcare stocks actually started to fall and we started to see money going into recovery stocks. We started to see money going into um, energy stocks and we started to see money going into XLB, basic material stocks. Same thing with industrial stocks and getting all the way to the top of the list in less sexy stocks, which are the uh, consumer discretionary stocks. So that's actually what we're doing here on a day in and day out basis and an hourly basis. Now, what I'm walking you through is quite simply just an easier way to understand how to track the order flow. Because we get questions all the time. What do you mean by order flow? What do you mean by reading the tape? And those two things combined are basically we're learning to develop the skill to pay attention. Where are people with deep pockets putting their money? And how long have they been doing that? So you need to know, are you a day trader or are you a swing trader? Which that's predominantly who we're speaking to. Then you need to know which charts. So the first, let's go back to the charts for a second. Because you need to know which order flow you're looking for. So if we happen to be day trading, this is the screen that I'm looking at as a day trader. And, and by the way, um, I strongly encourage you to take a snapshot of this. When I pull it back up on the screen... I strongly encourage you to take it and try and mimic it for yourself on your own screen because this is the screen that I'm trading on. This is my actual trade station. So the first one I'm going to show you is the day trading setup that I have. Then we're going to work our way over into the swing trading setup. One I use during the day and game plan and the other one I use at night and game plan. So day trading during the day, looking for day trade opportunities, swing trading. I look at night for the next day. So the first one we're going to take a look at is in the day trading sector. So this is basically the major sector ETFs on, on charts that are pretty much over two, over three days. So we're looking at three to five days worth of price action. We're looking at it from one hour to the next. We're looking at it from one day to the next. Then in the corner over here, this is the tick reading. Let me pull that up for you. It's a five minute chart of the New York Stock Exchange tick reading. I have negative 500, positive 500, and zero. Those are the only three levels I'm watching. You can see how heavy the market sold yesterday afternoon. Then at the same time, while I'm watching all the ETFs unfold, then I start to look at the VIX reading during the day and how is the VIX trading compared to, and this is yesterday, this is today, this is yesterday. How is the VIX trading? Now I want to be clear about this and we get, we get this question all the time. How do I use the market internals to make trading decisions? So what I just showed you, the two main market internals that I watch during the day are the VIX and the ticks, the New York Stock Exchange ticks and the volatility index. I am using those as secondary confirmation of what I'm already doing when I'm reading the order flow in the stocks and in the market. So I want to bring this back one more time. That, that what I just showed you, and again, take a snapshot of it. This is the day trading screen that I use when I'm looking to read the order flow during the day. It's the major sectors. The only ones I don't have on here are utilities and real estate. They don't really have that much volatility, so I'm using the ones that mostly move. Now, that's the day trading side of things. When I am swing trading, I have the same exact setup, but a little bit more, except in this corner here, I do not have the ticks and the VIX. I have the metals and miners and a couple of other ETFs so that it's a much wider perspective of what's going on in the market. Now, what ends up happening is as I'm reading the market during the day, and I'll just leave that up on the screen for a second, this is where preparation meets opportunity. And this is where you start to see your account go like this. Once you understand order flow, once you understand how to read the tape, everything changes because you're no longer at the whim of whether or not there's opportunity. You're prepared to spot the opportunity as it's unfolding. And I'll just give you an example. As the technology stocks and healthcare stocks have weakened over the last week or so, maybe the last 10 days, even though Apple hit new all-time highs a couple of days ago and became uh, three, uh, was touched the $3 trillion company, um, the, tech, the tech area, including semiconductors, have weakened a little bit. Um, and oh, Not energy stocks. Um, healthcare stocks have weakened a little bit. They've kind of lost their mojo. But here's, here's the most important part of everything we're going to talk about right now. When we spot it on charts, so if we go back to that chart and we start to see it on the bigger picture, 
We literally are look. That's <laughs> over here. We're literally looking at it on a hour by hour, day by day, week by week. Now, this is again, you probably heard me say this quite a bit because we're talking about which stocks to buy, how to find the best stocks to buy, how to find the right stocks at the right moment. Right. This is how to do it. When you are prepared, you are no longer reading headlines. You're no longer watching television. Hopefully you're watching me on YouTube. <laughs> and by the way, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you are watching what we're showing, which one of the biggest things that I always try to do, which is kind of my mantra, is I want you to understand how to make the money. I want to show you that direction. And then I want you to come back and say that you helped me. That, that's all I want. If you want to take it deeper, obviously, you can learn about our boot camp. You can click the, the link below. But I get asked all the time, why am I doing this? If I'm such a good trader, why am I doing this? Well, first of all, I am a good trader. Second of all, I'm doing this because trading is hard and you're probably pretty smart. You've probably put in a lot of time trying to learn how to do this and you're probably stuck at break even. Most traders are stuck at break even because they know everything. But what they can't figure out is you got everything written down on a notepad, everything you could possibly think of, but you can't get profitable. You're like, I know everything about trading. It just means that you haven't put the pieces in the right order for the objective, for the time frame you have, which is either day trading or swing trading. That's why we're doing what we're doing right now. So what I'm trying to do without giving you everything that's in the boot camp, there's a lot more in the boot camp. There's, you know, there's probably 14 hours worth of training in the boot camp. Um, I want to point you in a direction to get you excited that you know what you're doing. You just don't have the steps in the right order yet. So what I'm trying to walk you through here now, and if we go back to the screen, so let's say we're looking at swing trading opportunities. The biggest thing is you have all of this on your screen and you could have more than this. I just happen to have these up here to show you right now. You have, the, you have healthcare, metals and mining, the S&P 500, energy stocks, oil, industrials, basic materials, tech, Russell, 5, uh, Russell 2000, right? And you start to work your way, consumer discretionary, gold miners, XLK, technology, the Dow, the financials, and consumer staples. So think about what we're walking you through right now, okay? Most people think that trading is about predicting. It's not about predicting. Ask yourself a question. Why do stocks go up and down? Just start with that simple question. Why do stocks go up and down? And the answer, regardless of how complicated you want to make it, Stocks go up and down because somebody with a lot of money, deep pockets, and probably teams and teams of research analysts decided to buy that stock and start building a position because they think the future value of it, the cash flows in the future are worth more than what they could pay for it now. That's all you need to know. Because when you take that primary question about why stocks go up and down, and then the next logical question, which is order flow, is how do we spot that order flow of that deep pocketed person starting to build a position. It just means you need to be prepared to read the order flow. Once you are making all of the complicated trading things that you look at out the window and you're like, the only question that matters is why is this stock going up or down? And it's because somebody with a lot of money started buying it or dumping it. Then what you're looking for on the, you're not looking for chart patterns anymore. You're looking for somebody who's spending money. Let that sink in for a second. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a day trader or a swing trader. This happens to be I'm looking for the money. I'm looking for the order flow. I'm looking to read the tape over a three-month period if I'm looking to swing trade. If, and again, if you want to snapshot this, you could snapshot it. So when I find an idea that I like here, and let's just say for argument's sake, we're looking at here, you can see what we're talking about, healthcare stocks and how they have lost their mojo, right? You can see that super clear. So if I, and let's actually stick with this for a second. If we're looking at this up in the left-hand corner over here, and I'm saying to myself, who's spending money today? Where can I go on the Wall Street market <laughs> and find some, find some, where can I go find a pet rock right now? Where can I go find something that is so obvious that the mass of money is flying into that? Oh, well, that's great. For the entire month of December, healthcare stocks were getting a lot of smart money attention. So healthcare stocks, we're getting smart money attention. You think I should be paying attention to that? You bet your ass. Of course, I'm going to pay attention to that. Why would I guess? Stop thinking that trading is about predicting. The problem that most traders have is when you spot 
something, you place the trade and it doesn't work, you think trading doesn't work. And then you got to go to another strategy and another strategy and another strategy. And you keep blaming all of the other people when it's you who just need to take that final step of saying, okay, I can read the order flow now. I need to learn how to manage positions. I need to learn how to manage the downside. I need to learn how to manage winning trades. That's the skill part of trading that we need time with each other to see different market conditions, to see different trading ideas, which again, I'm not going to sell it, but that's the whole point of our boot camp is the more time we have together, the more trading conditions and scenarios that we have together, you and I can have a direct conversation. I know there's a lot of people in here right now um, that are in the boot camp or have been in the boot camp. They can validate what I'm talking about right now. You need to make decisions, but I want to make it clear to you. There's a separation between the right stocks to buy and being a trader. Please write that down. I can't get that across to you in any more strong way because it will make a world-changing difference for you. There's a difference between reading order flow and trading. Trading is an active endeavor after you've identified a good idea. So I want to work my way back into that. Somebody was asking, how do we identify when a stock is out of favor? That's actually what reading the order flow and tape reading is. So AR, that's exactly what we teach in the boot camp. I can't do that here on YouTube because that would be disrespecting to people that have invested in the boot camp. So I can't get into that much detail. However, let's get into when we do identify ideas that are obvious. So we've already talked about this screen, right? Whether it's day trading or swing trading. So this happens to be the swing trading screen, watching stocks over a couple of months. Let's say I've identified something that I want to be a buyer of. And let's just say now, let's go to the opposite side. Let's say that XLV healthcare stocks are performing poorly right now, and you want to buy puts. You want to think it's going down, whatever that happens to be. That's where we are now prepared with our list of stocks. So think about what we said. Why are stocks going up and down? Somebody is pushing those stocks around. Somebody with a lot of money. Okay, great. I've noticed a hot pocket in the market right now. Now I need to know which stocks are performing in that area. And now I'm just going to go simply read the tape and time entries. So when you're prepared like this, you're not scrambling. You're not reading headlines. You're not watching TV. You're, you're not like on Reddit. I saw somebody posted Reddit in there. That's garbage. What if Reddit shuts down tomorrow? What Seriously, what if it gets shut down? What if something happens or you can't get in there? It's not going to happen. My point is you want to be in charge of the process. Don't rely on some random dude that you've never met before. It could be some 12-year-old kid in the basement copying and pasting an article for something else. Look, you could be saying that about me right now, but I'm teaching you what to look at. I'm teaching you the highest odds of follow-through. I'm teaching you how to be prepared so that you could make the decisions. I'm literally teaching you to not rely on somebody else. And I know that's a little ironic when I'm trying to show you how to do it, but I'm fully aware of that because look, the bottom line is the more I can help you, maybe you want to be with me in a little different capacity. Maybe you want to come into our boot camp. If not, I'm fine with that. But my point is, let's say that we worked our way over into um, healthcare stocks. And we're like, yeah, money is flowing into healthcare stocks right now. It's super obvious, right? We're reading the tape. We're reading the order flow. Having that list ready is what will separate you. So then we jump right over here into our list of healthcare stocks and we start to break them down. We break them down by the day. We break them down by the week. We break them down by the month. And then we work our way into the best opportunities. If we happen to be day trading, we do the same exact thing with our day trading list. Energy was strong for three days. The market, the spy did really nothing for a couple of days. Financials exploded. So you start to work your way over into some other ideas. So for example, we've been watching Citigroup. We've been watching American Express for that same period of time. We've been watching Goldman Sachs for that same period of time. So once you understand your objective, day trade, swing trade, now you know which time frames you're looking at, longer term charts, hourly charts, three day charts. Then it's just a question of having that list ready. Once you understand where money is flowing, once you understand where order flow is flowing. But remember what I said, spotting it and learning how to make money, two different skills. That's what I want to leave you with today. Finding the right ideas right now, as we started out at the beginning of today's call, we're kind of in a little precarious situation where the selling got heavy. We hit new all-time highs a couple of days ago. So me personally right now, I'm working my way down in a little bit of a shorter time frame on some of the ideas that were stronger. But over the last week or so, we've noticed basic material stocks, such as Alcoa has been one, Alcoa. 
You can see where we've been over the last couple of weeks. Uh, NUE actually exploded last two days, finally got through this resistance level. NEM, then we work our way over into some industrial stocks. We've been watching some of them. They don't have order flow yet, but they have been moving recently. Uh, 3M, Boeing, Caterpillar, and you can see some of the um, uh, healthcare stocks, which have not had some mojo, we stayed away from them. So this is where it's obvious. This is where it becomes a choppy mess and we just choose to stay away. All right. So look, I, ju I just want to leave you with this. Clearly, I can't give you everything that I do in the boot camp because that would, um, it would, it would be disrespectful to the people that invested the $295 and joined us for 30 days. If you want to do that, that's fine. I, I would love to have you. Uh, we, I think we have the, the best Discord community and the best channel that you could possibly have. However, here's the big thing. I'm hoping that I'm giving you enough um, interesting information that you'll want to keep coming back here and we continue to have these kinds of conversations. Because the biggest thing in my community is the more people we have looking at the same order flow, the more people we have getting comfortable with that same order flow and trading with each other and calling out entries and exits and adding and building and changes in the tape in the market, the more people that are on the same page, the more opportunities that are going to unfold for each other. That's just the way it's going to work. Instead of just my eyes calling out ideas, now we have 400 people calling out ideas every day for each other and you start to trust each other. So whether you stay here on social media or you take the plunge and you join us in a boot camp, I do want you to know you're going to get my best stuff. It's just a question of do you want to go a little bit deeper with me? So hopefully today I gave you some ideas. Hopefully you took a snapshot of all that stuff uh, for the different time frames and the different types of charts. And then you take it a step further and you start to make lists of individual stocks within those sectors. And then you're ready for when the market opens. But remember, I want I want to make this clear because I get some, you know, there's there's the social media angry people. <laughs> there's a difference between finding ideas and trading and making money. Most people are stuck here. Most people understand how to look at the charts. But again, looking at charts and reading the order flow is not the same thing. Shift your perspective. We say, I'm not looking for a bull flag. I'm looking for money being allocated. That's what you're looking for, which is why you also need to learn how to input volume into what you're looking at. That's a big part of it as well. All right. Um, I have to actually take, I have to take, uh, <laughs> I have to go. I have to get ready for another meeting. So I want to thank you so much for joining me here today. Please do me a favor. Um, if you found value, please do me a favor. Smash that like button and make sure you hit subscribe. You'll get new updates. Uh, also, I, I just want to say that I really appreciate that you're here with me because I put a lot of effort into this, not because I put effort into it, but because I really care about whether or not I'm helping you. Uh, and if I am helping you, I hope you come back when we do these broadcasts every morning and tell your friends about it, because um, it's kind of fun when the light bulb goes off, because trading can be challenging. Sometimes you can feel like you're doing it by yourself, um, but you start to get a little bit of progress and it makes you really hungry for the next step. Uh, and hopefully the more that we interact, the more I can help open up more of those layers of the onion for you. All right. Have an awesome day, everybody. I will speak to you soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it.